people before you, they used to view the Quran as messages from Allah, something which is personal. And so they used to read it during the day, act by it, and also ponder over it during the night time. The Mus'haf, we should hold it and deem it to be something which is very sacred. And it is that we hold it with great, great respect. How we treat it, where we put it. Even when we look after its covering, its binding, the condition that it's, it is. All of this is reverence. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us in the Quran, ذَلِكَ وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ The people who magnify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala signs and symbols and that which is from the religion, this is a sign of of the taqwa that they have in their hearts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters and dear viewers, welcome back to another episode of Reverses, this podcast that we have by Tartil and a podcast that has been designed to help us, inshallah ta'ala, develop our relationship with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to enhance it for those who may need enhancing and for us to shed light not only uh, from the guests who are delivering the show but also from our callers as well on how the journey of the Quran actually works and we have different segments for this podcast the first segment is a caller that calls in and speaks to us a person who's memorizing the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have a conversation with them and then the second segment is the segment of advice and nasiha that we may uh, share with the audience and then the final segment is a segment where we have a half of the Quran right at the end before we conclude the episode and wrap it up to speak to us about how they have found the Quran to be in their life and their relationship with it. So inshallah ta'ala we're going to get started and we ask Allah to make this a beneficial episode and one that he accepts yawm al qiyamah. So we're going to call our brother uh, Uk uh, Tam John. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear brother. Barakallahu feek. Jazakallahu khairan. I ha- had a little bit of anxiety that I was saying it wrong. Was the tajweed good? Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, barakallahu feek. You're calling from Uzbekistan? Yes, I'm from Uzbekistan. Um, yeah. Barakallahu feek. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Okay. Uh, we want to know a bit more about Uqtam Jan before we get started, inshallah ta'ala. Tell us uh, your journey of the Qur'an, where have you have reached when you started and so on. Um, well, I'm from Uzbekistan. I started memorizing Qur'an a year ago. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Bas- basically, I first memorized one juice, the last juice of the Qur'an. And then uh, it was a pause for two or three months and in last year in the summer i dedicated myself to the memorization of quran and memorized eight jews and nowadays i'm also continuing my memorization in summer i memorized it but i didn't do revision so those eight eight jews is um, really weak to be honest but uh I realized that these mistakes and nowadays I, the last five Jews, I memorized five Jews after that and now I do revision and they are good. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. In Jameel. total 12 Jews. Alhamdulillah. May Allah allow you to memorize the rest and strengthen the parts that are not strong. Uh, so uh, that's good to know. Uh, so effectively, the good thing about you, mashallah, is you already know uh, why certain parts are strong, why certain parts are weak. Uh, a lot of people, they ask us for advice why uh, they are having these parts weak and had these parts strong, and they want our advice. But you seem like you already know why uh, certain parts you, mem- you revised, some certain parts you didn't. Do you have any question for us, inshallah? Yes, I got two questions. Yep. So the uh, first one is, and my memorization method is I memorize two pages in after the Maghrib every single day. Yep. And in the morning, I do repetition of those memorized pages uh, without looking at the Mus'haf for 10 times, yep. uh, one page 10 times. So uh, let's say if, I to, if today I memorize two pages, tomorrow I will do mem- repetition of that without looking at Mus'haf. 20 times in total for two pages. Also, apart from yesterday's uh, memorized pages, I do for other two previous days. So in total, I do 
uh, three days, the last three days, memorize the two pages. So it will be 60 times for six Masha. pages. You, you got right? Yes. So my question is, um, after I do, let's say, 20 or 30 times uh, repetition from memory, my brain starts to feel really exhausted, kind of brain fatigue. I don't know how to call it. So I struggle to continue. I just feel really tired. So that's my problem. Uh, it's not uh, only related to repetition also. For example, if I do Hatam and I do after 40 or 50 minutes, my brain really starts um, kind of bored, you know. So my question is how I can do, like I can continue this repetition without interruption or whenever I do Hatam, I don't get bored. So my question is this first one. Okay. What do you think uh, is the answer to this question? Some people uh, say take a break. Uh, it's it's kind of seems obvious, but also I don't know what to do in those breaks. How these breaks should be organized, time limits, and so on. Okay, so this is something which uh, is not new. It's something which is something which is well known. It happens, and everybody has their limit. Now you need to push past this limit. The way you push past this limit, 50 minutes, for example, in your case, isn't to force it. So if you start shutting down, your head's hurting, um, you don't feel right, it's not correct for you to push through. For many reasons, even from a shari perspective in the religion, the Prophet ﷺ says, Allah loves if one of you is to do an action that they perfect it, right? They do it correctly. They do it in the best way, not to just do it for the sake of doing it. So... When you reach your limit, everybody knows my limit is 30 minutes, my limit is 50 minutes, my limit is 2 hours. Whatever your limit is, try your best by slowly increasing a little bit. So say for example, your limit is 50 minutes, in the beginning stop at 50. Then add 5 minutes, then add 10 minutes, then add, keep it at 10 minutes for a while, then add another 5 minutes and so on. But if you keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, you may not make the most of it. It's like a treadmill, they say, like some of them, treadmill, you know, you start small, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, then you can get to one hour, then you can run, and then you could do even more than that. But you don't start from that side, you don't start from the deep end. So I would say definitely, as long as you know your limit, push past it by doing it gradually. So breaks are also good, like you said, some people have given you the advice of breaks, but not necessarily breaks, but add it bit by bit, bit by bit, piece by piece, inshallah. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Uh, Jazakallah khair. Uh, another thing I wanted to ask is when you said about 60 times, sometimes you revise the page you were saying earlier. Remember about revision? Yes, I do. It's apart from revision. Apart from revision. So the, when you do 60 times, is that the amount of time you need for, for like half or or revision or whatever it may be? Or is it like that's the amount you go with? What I mean by this is some people, if they repeat it 30 times, they memorized it. So are you just repeating 60 times because 60 times is a number that you want to go with or is 60 times the amount of time you need to repeat it? Um, I, I didn't really test it, uh, the amount that I memorized well, but it's just the standard that I put for myself. Okay, so obviously repeating the Quran is very beautiful and it's a lot of reward and it's all khair. And the more you repeat it, the more that it will remain with you for a long time, inshallah. Uh, but just because you want to maybe manage your time between hifad, revision, and more than that, uh, I would say try to also identify the amount of time on average you need. Is it 30? Is it 20? Is it 50? Is it 60? And then try to stick to that. So you just get a bit more time to do other things. But obviously it's still khair uh, repeating uh, the Quran as much, many times as possible is all khair yeah inshallah inshallah may Allah bless you barakallah it's lovely to hear somebody who's called us and from Uzbekistan go ahead yeah, I got also a second question if you if you have time of course of course go ahead so second question is also kind of related to first question you know some there are some people who recite the Quran uh, wherever they are like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah Kind of 
you know, if they are recite Quran in the bus, whenever they go. So my question is, how we can be people of the Quran that recites Quran whenever they have a chance to recite it, even if five minutes, ten minutes. Allahu Akbar. Yeah. That's a wonderful question. The answer is easy, though. It's easy to the one who Allah makes it easy for. The answer is easy, but it's only easy to implement the answer if Allah makes it easy for you. And the answer to the question is to just do it, to make it a routine, to try your best to remind yourself. So if you haven't done this before, sometimes you may not remember, you may not uh, do it. So maybe have a reminder on your phone. Make sure you read one page of Quran today. Like for example, you know in the middle of the day, I'm going to be at work. I'm going to be going for a walk. I'm going to be going shopping. So you know that I'm going shopping in the afternoon. So put a reminder. If you are not used to this, put a reminder on your phone. So when you are at shopping, you get reminded. Make sure you read one page. Now you've read one page in the shopping. Uh, when you go for a walk, now you've read one page walking on the street, etc. After you do this in the beginning, manually you remind yourself, it will become automatic a part of your life inshallah and the people who now we see them reading the Quran wherever they are however state they are in like Allah says it's because they started off in this way so remind yourself make reminders inshallah ta'ala and then after that it will become a part of who you are and your identity bi'idhinillah yeah inshallah jazakallah khairan wa iyaakum wa iyaakum jazakumullah khairan to you too and we look forward to speaking with you soon inshallah ta'ala uh, and next inshallah ta'ala wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullah barakallahu feek assalamu alaykum if it's safe to do so i want you to close your eyes and imagine a red rectangle just a plain black background and a red rectangle okay you can open your eyes imagine if you had a photographic memory a memory where just as clear as you just saw that red rectangle without actually having it in front of you you could picture any page of the quran with every verse every word every ayah every letter of the quran perfectly for most of us it's possible to improve our memorization of the quran to get it to a point where we can actually see the verses in our minds i'm not saying it's possible for everybody but with exposure with repetition with some tips and tricks we can improve our memorization of the quran and that is my favorite aspect of Tartil. Tartil is an app that allows you to blank out the pages of the Quran and it fills them in as you recite. By actually reciting and watching the Mus'haf fill up as you're reciting, doing it enough times will help us to be able to picture the Quran and store it in our memory. And there's a plethora of other features that Tartil has to improve your connection with the Quran. But I just wanted to reflect on that one thing because I think that's something all of us would love to have. By closing our eyes, imagining a surah and imagining the page and seeing the page in front of us. And Tartil is one of the greatest tools that exists in the digital world that can help us do that. So download Tartil, give it a go, and I'm sure you won't regret it. Back to the podcast. Inshallah ta'ala, we're now going to go to our segment of advice. The Qur'an, it is something that a person should treat very personal to them. A lot of the people of the past, from them Al-Hasan, they used to say, إِنَّ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ رَأَوُ الْقُرْآنَ الرَّسَائِلَ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ That the early generations, the people before you, they used to view the Qur'an as messages from Allah, something which is personal. Imagine something that someone beloved to you has sent to you alone, or is directing at you or is speaking to you it's something which you should, you should treat with respect and the first way you treat it with respect is acknowledging from your heart that this person really really wants to share with you something amazing and this is how the quran is and so they used to read it during the day act by it and also ponder over it during the night time and this is how we should all treat the quran and there are various ways of doing this by honoring the book of allah when we go to our classes, by honoring the book of Allah, by how much time we spend with it, by honoring the book of Allah, brothers and sisters, even by the Mus'haf, the Mus'haf, we should hold it and deem it to be something which is very sacred. And it is that we hold it with great, great respect when we are physically carrying it, how we treat it, where we put it, our Mus'haf, we look after it. Even when we look after its covering, its binding, the condition that it's, it is, all of this is reverence. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us in the Quran that the people who magnify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala signs and symbols and that which is from the religion this is a sign of the taqwa that they have in their hearts and taqwa is what puts you into jannah so a person has to ensure that the Quran is personal to them when something is personal to you it has this 
impact on your heart that you can't go without it. So this also helps you to become a companion of the Quran. So the people that are part of your personal life, your personal matters, your family, these things are personal, it's to do with you. So you can't go a long time except that you you deal with them or you see them or you integrate with them and so on. Likewise, the book of Allah will become like this when our mindset is firstly, this is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's personal to me. My journey with the Quran, look at how the Quran explains it, look at how the Sunnah explains it. That the difference between a person who is spending time with it and a person who is not is like that of the living and the dead. Living of the so I'm living. So the book of Allah is what keeps me alive spiritually from my heart, from my soul. Without it, I'm not going to have a life that's worth living. The Prophet وسلم, he said that the one who has no trace of the Quran in his heart is like the destroyed house. There's no khair, there's nothing that's and no one will visit the destroyed house, no one will want to live in it. So this is how we have to treat the Quran, inshaAllah Ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the Quran that which is the most beloved and the most personal thing to us that we take with us wherever we go. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrect us by the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give us the lofty ranks in paradise through the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakallahu fikum. And next inshaAllah Ta'ala we are going to call in our brother Abdullah who is a hafid of the Quran and we're always is excited to hear from a half of the Quran because it's truly commendable and amazing uh, what you have achieved. So our brother Abdullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Shaykh. Ya marhaba, Akh Abdullah from Somal? La la la, Pakistan. Pakistan, Allahu Akbar. Pakistan and Somalia are quite far apart. How no. are you, Abdullah? You okay? <laughs> Allah, I'm okay, Shaykh. How are you? I'm very well. So where are you calling from now at the moment? From Norbury. From Norbury in the UK? Norbury? Uh, in Croydon, yeah. In Croydon. Okay. Abdullah from Norbury, Croydon. Oh, I think I know which Abdullah this is. Is it the Abdullah that I think it is? I think so, yeah. Okay. So I know exactly who you are. Okay, Abdullah, go ahead. <laughs> Just like Allah. Khairan. No, Sheikh, uh, where would you like me to start? Abdullah, uh, you're speaking to me and I know a bit about you already, but you need to speak to us from the beginning as if we don't know anything. So walk us through your journey, who Abdullah is and the amazing things that you've already shared with me in the past. We want to hear it again, inshallah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so obviously my name is Abdullah. I'm from Croydon. I'm from Pakistan originally. Uh, I was born and raised in the UK. And um, subhanAllah, I can say that uh, from kind of my earliest memories, in terms of my family environment, it was just kind of Quran and Ibadah in that sense. Um, all the time, I'd say specifically with my mom as well, it was kind of a, a very strong emphasis on always having the Quran either played or recited. So um, my mom my mom used to teach in, a, uh, in an Islamic school, a primary school. So obviously I used to attend that as well as my Mashallah. siblings. And um, because she was a teacher there, we'd have to go into the school a bit earlier. Uh, so for the kids who would go in earlier, they had a Quran program in the morning. So we'd memorize no. Quran in the morning before the actual school day started. As well as on the way to the on the way to school, my mom would be playing Quran, like specifically Sheikh Al Hudayfi and Sheikh Saad Al Ghamadi. So those two are kind of like very prominent reciters no. that I can remember as a child. So no. I think from about maybe the, the age of five, six, I can remember I started memorizing Quran like properly properly memorizing. Um, but because of that constant exposure to the Quran, there was a, like a large part of the Quran that I'd already memorized because of just listening. And I, like when it came to it, I just had to piece it together. But alhamdulillah, because of that, it was very fluid. It was very, like I can say, it was a very organic uh, way of memorizing the Quran and being introduced to the Quran. MashaAllah. Uh, um, so yeah, alhamdulillah, once I, I finished primary school, I think I'd done about, alhamdulillah, half of the Quran taqriban, or just a Mashallah. bit more than half. You did um, half of the Quran from primary school when you finished primary school? By about 11, I was on Surah Al-Isra, yeah. MashaAllah Akbar, that's amazing. Um, Allah Akbar. And then, and then after that, it was a bit slower, stagnated a little bit, but Alhamdulillah, I managed to finish by the time I was about 14. MashaAllah. Um, so by the time I was 14, it was all done. MashaAllah, Allah Akbar. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was kind of the has the Quran, how has the Quran really helped you in your life? So and that, that's in terms of your journey and how, how it went for you. But post that time, so 14 years old, when you memorize the Quran until now, what have you seen in your life? Uh, 
I'll say once I finished the Quran, I'll say just like to add a bit of context maybe is that once I finished the Quran, I wasn't really aware of what to do after. So like I didn't know anything about Qiraat, I didn't know like how to do Tathbeet or even that I needed to do Tathbeet. So I kind of like almost, I really stagnated after that. Um, so for a few years, it was a very like a rocky relationship with the Quran, I guess I could say. It was difficult. And then I remember when I was in sixth form, it was like, I decided, okay, let me just pick it up and really go through it again. And subhanAllah, I found that, wallahi, you know, I see this as a big ni'mah and a barakah from Allah that there's opportunities that I've had and doors that have been opened for me that I can't think of any other reason apart from Allah my parents Allah. and the Quran. Wallahi, Allah like, Allah. Uh, Shaykh, apart from anything other than that. MashaAllah, 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 MashaAllah. That's very heartfelt. And that's also something that is, is very beautiful to hear as well. And there was a Sheikh this Ramadan that actually told me this. He's from Egypt. I was spending time with him this Ramadan. And I asked him this question. I said, Sheikh, like Allah has op given you so many openings. And we were speaking privately. And just to take a leaf out of your book, um, can you tell us like what, has, what you think, you reckon that made you reach this? And he said exactly what you said in his own words. He said, the Quran, and he said, the dua of my mother. And I'd like yeah. to take this opportunity to invite all of our brothers and sisters to these two things. Uh, if your mother is still alive, and those who mothers may no longer be alive, may Allah have mercy on them all. And obviously, even if they have passed away, there's still a lot of good that you can do uh, uh, towards them, inshallah ta'ala. But if they are alive, and you have the Quran with you, as you can hear from our brother Abdullah, and also the story of the Sheikh, and many, many, many other people, you just have to go on YouTube just to see, it is that these two things, each one of them is powerful. But when they come together, you become an unstoppable force. Literally, you, be, you will be given so much khair. And so long as you're sincere, and so long as you continue, the doors will only continue opening, inshallah ta'ala. Barakallahu feek ya Abdullah. So at the moment, uh, what are you up to? Are you teaching the Quran now? Uh, what are you, what, in terms of the Quran, what are you doing at the moment? Yeah, I've been teaching for a few years and uh, kind of just going through some some other things. That, uh, I, I don't really want to mention it at this point in time, like inshallah. No worries. Um, doing some other things and just trying to increase my uh, you know understanding of the Quran and connection with the Quran at the minute. Tama, tama. Well, may Allah Jalla wa'ala grant you tawfiq and allow you to remain steadfast on the path that you're on and accept it all from you. Uh, anything that you want to share, any advices that you want to share with the brothers and sisters, any last words? Uh, advice, I think it would just be, um, be very cautious of who you're staying around in terms of your company if you want to memorize the Quran. Um, because I think that, that determines whether you'll be able to finish the Quran or not if you have good people around you. Even if they're not memorizing the Quran, as long as they're kind of, they have a similar mindset to you, then then you'll be able to memorize. But if you're with people who they don't really understand why you're doing it or they don't believe in its importance, then you're never going to be able to do it. Zakallah khair. Zakallah khair. That's a lovely advice to end off with. Uh, any last things you want to ask or? Uh, perhaps just, Sheikh, about staying sincere with the Quran, uh, especially in a day and age where we have so much, so many cameras and social media and whatnot. How does one stay sincere with the Quran? Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's uh, very uh, trying and testing uh, for for sure. Um, so I'd say this. I'd say, look, if a person is not in the camera, then don't go on the camera. So we, we want to sort of do a lot of damage control uh, like before we actually give an advice. So I think we can divide the people into two. The people who are already on and the people who are not even on. So if you're not even on, no need to come on. Okay, uh, no need to come on. It's not wajib. Uh, it, it may not even be something which is encouraged, and so on and so forth. It's better to just protect yourself as much as possible, and that's just an advice. Uh, and the people who are on, I guess, uh, no harm in sometimes taking a step back and actually reviewing yourself, reviewing your life, reviewing why. What's your why? Why are you doing this? Are you promoting yourself? Are you promoting the religion of Allah? Are you promoting the Quran? Are you getting something from this? And so if you stop gaining that, you're gonna stop doing what you're doing. That means it's all about you then. There's a personal gain attached to this. So it doesn't mean that if you're on it, you have to necessarily come off it right now. But if you're on it, you definitely have a lot of questions you need to answer. You need to have a conversation with your soul and you need to figure out why you're doing these things. What will help both categories of people, I personally believe, is to have people as mentors that you see and you deem to be close to Allah. Righteous people. 
who their hearts are connected to iman and ibadah and so on not necessarily people of knowledge only people of knowledge obviously that's that's beautiful as well but the best will be people of knowledge that also have this side of iman and ibadah as well as we know uh, people are different from person to person but people who have this form of tazkiyah ibadah and obedience and these people will be able to shed a lot of light and the older they are the better because they will have a lot of experience as well that's the advice i will give and allah knows best it really made me happy to uh, speak to somebody that I know and a wonderful person that I know. Jazakallah khairan for calling in. Okay, that was our brother Abdullah that I actually know personally. It was wonderful to hear uh, from him. And uh, he's very humble and he mentioned certain things and we know about him certain other things as well that are very inspiring. Uh, so I would advise our brothers and sisters inshallah ta'ala to always look into the stories and accounts of people memorize the Quran even if it's on YouTube because it's very beneficial you can see people that are in UK and places like this who have really really benefited from memorizing the Quran and their life has completely changed so may Allah bless them all and bless Abdullah and inshallah ta'ala we look forward to speaking with you all in the next episode wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh